writing to his disciples. He's giving them some essential information. He was about to leave them. And he was giving them what he knew was to hold them up while he was gone. So in John, this is what he is writing to them. In verse 1, it reads, I am the true vine, and my father is the vine dresser. I have New American Standard. That's what I'm saying. By my head. And my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruits, he takes away, and every branch that bears fruits, he prunes it. So that it may bear more fruit. Verse 3 says, You are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. He said, Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, so neither you unless you abide in me. He said, I am the vine. And you are the branches. He who abides in me, and I in him, he bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. Nothing. And nothing is nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is thrown away. As a branch and dries up. And they gather them and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. And verse 7 is where I was saying. He said, if you abide in me, and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you. Ask whatever you wish, and it will be done to you. According to John's writing here, there are two types of people. People who claim to follow Jesus, those who produce spiritual fruits, and those who don't. But the indictment here is Jesus is telling them that I am the true vine. And if they got a true vine, they got a false vine also. But he wanted them to know that he was the true vine. And he said, my father is the vine dresser. So he is the true and his father is the vine dresser. But he said, every branch in me that does not bear he said, he take them away and every branch that bears fruit, he proves it so that it may bear more fruit. So you know what happens when a vine get cut off from the tree, don't it? Don't you know? We cast it aside and he dies. So he wanted them to know that you have to uh, bear fruit. You have to bear fruit. And in order to bear fruit, there are times that we have to be pruned. You know that certain times we have we have gardens, we have to prune our trees. Sometimes you cut them to the top and they grow tall, or you cut them to the side and they grow up. But this is what he's telling us. There will be a pruning. 
to send situations in our life. Why? Not to destroy us. Because he's trying to grow us up that we will be fruitful. He's trying to grow us up. And he told him, he said, you're already clean because of the word which I've spoken unto you. How many of us know that the word will make you clean? He spoke the word of God to them. And this is what John is telling us. We have to clean ourselves by the word of God. Nothing else. The word makes us clean. Not just on the outside, but on the inside. The word works in our heart. And when the heart is right. See, when the heart is right, everything else don't fall in place. When the heart is right. When your heart is right, I'm going to treat my brothers and my sisters the way I'm supposed to treat them. Because love is in the heart. And this is what he's saying. He said, if abide in me, and I in you, he wants us to abide. And that word, abide in this first means to remain. Not hit and miss. I want a genuine relationship with you. I want you to stay with me. Why? Because he is the power. He wants us to stay connected to him. Because we know what happens when we go to the light switch and turn it on. If there's no power there, there's no connection there, then we don't get no light. But in order for us to be who he wants us to be, to bear fruits, first of all, to bear fruits means he wants us to mirror his character. He wants us to look like he does. He wants us to do the things that please him in his sight. So we have to stay connected to the power source. We have to stay connected. And he said, Abide in me and I in you, and the branch cannot bear of itself. Let it abide in the vine, so neither can you unless you abide in me. He said, I am the vine, and you are the branches. He who abides in me, and I in him, he bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can't do nothing. We can't do nothing apart from the grace of God, apart from him doing it through us. We can't inhale or exhale unless God do it for us. We can't do nothing. And whatever we do and think we can't do, we got to know it's nothing but the grace of God. Nothing but the grace of God. He's the one who gives us our strength. He's the one who leads us and guides us. And this is why he wants us to stay connected to him. He wants us to abide in him. Not our connection. Our affiliations, not our jobs, not our husband. And thank God for husband and our wife. We love them, but he wants us to stay connected to him. Because look, apart from him, we can do nothing. He said, I am the vine, and you are the branches. Let us remember that. He is the vine. And we have to stay connected to the vine. That's where our nourishment comes from. That's where our strength comes from. That's where our peace comes from. When we stay connected to him. We have to stay connected to him. He said, who you abide in me and I in him, he bear much fruit. And King James said, more fruits. So it don't just be bad. Some of you will be bearing more fruits. More fruits. This is what he wants us to do. He wants us to bear fruits. And those fruits are, you know, the fruit that Jesus expects us to bear is the memory of all we look like him. He wants us to look like him. He wants us to share this gospel. He wants us to be evangelistic minded, to share with somebody else, to let them know that there's a reality in serving the true and the living God. This is the fruit that he wants us to bear. And we also hear Pastor Gay say the fruit of a Christian is another Christian. So therefore, he, he wants us to stay connected to bear these truth so we can bring some sheep into the kingdom. This is what he wants us to do. He said, if anyone does not abide in me, he is thrown away as a branch and dries up, and they gather them and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. So we know what we do when branches are, we cut our branches off our trees. We know what we do. They don't, you know, they are no good anymore because they dry up. And this is what he's telling us. If we don't stay connected to him, we drive up. We become weak. We become hopeless. There's no strength if we don't stay connected to him, if we don't buy our body in him. You know, if everything starts getting on our nerves, but if we stay 
get connected to him. There's a peace that passes all understanding that he gives us. And we stay connected to him through prayer. Prayer is the key, y'all, and faith don't unlock the door. Prayer changes things, and, but you know what? Prayer changes us too. And prayer keeps us fit. If we're going to do anything, let us be prayerful and stay connected to the power source. He is our connection. Because without him, we can do nothing. And then verse 7 says, If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, you can ask what you can. And it will be done unto us. He wants us to abide in him. Remain. Stay with me. I'm the answer to it all. Stay connected to me. Stay connected to me. And my word. The word of God is a living word, John. Hebrews said the word of God is sharp. It's quick. It's powerful. So he wants us to stay with the word. Stay with the word in us. When we have the word of God, we will not go wrong. This is our road map. He has given us a road map to stay connected to him. And when we stay, stay connected to him, we can eat through fruits and run jumps over wall because he said so. He says, he tells us so many things in his word. He said, no weapon that is formed against you gonna prosper. He said, every tongue that rises against you in the judgment shall be condemned if your righteousness is of me, said the Lord. He said, without me, you can do nothing. There's nothing we can't do. Nothing. We're not smart enough. You know, we, we're not smart enough to think we can do these things on our own. And whatever we do, we got to give God the glory, the honor, and the praise. Because if we got no knowledge, it's come from Him. If we just got some talents and some gifts, it comes from Him. Everything that we have comes from Him. And I say that all the time. All that I am, you mean. All that I have, came from you. And this is what we should do. We should stay connected to the power source. And if we stay connected to God, he will use us in so, so, so many ways. He wants to use us. He wants to use us. He said, just call on me. Whenever there's a problem, call on me. In the day of trouble, and I hear and I answer you. And I show you great and mighty things that you know not. He said, while you are calling, I've already answered you. This is what he's saying. So he has already answered us. So he wants us to call him. He wants us to abide with him, stay with him, remain in him. Because why? He's the answer to it all, y'all. Apart from him, we can't do nothing. He left these last final words with his disciples. And now they are for us. So we are disciple makers. So he needed these same words to us. Apart from me, you can do nothing. This is what he's saying to us this morning. So abide in him. Stay connected to the power source. Jesus is the connection to the power source. Thank God for the Holy Spirit he gives us. We don't have to uh, just, uh, uh, we don't just have to just be disarrayed by nothing because the Holy Spirit is on the inside of us. And he's leading and guiding us. He speaks to us. He's there to help us. He's our paraclete. He helps us to deal with every situation we do. So remain in him. Just settle down. You got peace that passes all understanding. And Jesus is right here with us. All we have to do is stay connected to the power source. And that's my message to you this morning. Apart from him, we can't do nothing. So whatever we do, we just got to tell the Lord, thank you. We have to humble ourselves and tell him, thank you. When we humble ourselves, we know it's not about us. He said, those that humble themselves, I will exalt them. So we have to humble ourselves and just stay connected to the power source. That's my word to you this morning. Father, we just thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you are the connection, Lord. You are the power source, Lord. Just thank you for being God and God all by yourself. Keep reminding us, Lord, that apart from you, we can do nothing. We are nothing. We thank you right now.
now for my sisters and the brothers that are here, Lord. God, oh, something was said or done that would refresh their mind, Lord, that we need to stay connected to you because you're the answer to it all. We thank you for our pastor, Lord God. He has the blessing on him and sister James, Lord, for a fresh one. We thank you for our discipleship, our Lord. Thank you for all those that are present here, Father. We give you glory, we give you honor and praise. Because we come to worship you, God. Because you are spirit, Lord. And yet, worship you, must worship you in spirit and in truth. We thank you, Lord. And we love you, we give you glory, we give you honor and praise. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen, amen. Discipleship, our Lord.